Hey man. What's up? Have you ever heard of Harrison O'Kenne? Harrison O'Kenne? Harrison O'Kenne. Is it Harrison? Harrison. O'Kenne? O'Kenne, yes. No, I have no idea who this is. Um, Harrison O'Kenne uh, uh, is another one where I feel like we did this for an episode recently. I don't remember what the episode was, but depending on your perspective, he's either the luckiest or unluckiest person to ever live. Um, okay. But not ever, really. Uh, <laughs> You're very lucky or very unlucky. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you got to say lucky because of how the story turned out. He's lucky, but there's a moment there where it was pretty unlucky. Uh, <laughs> All right, fiddle off. <laughs> what do you call tugboat people? All the rest of the rooms filled up completely with water, but it's upside down. So the toilet water dumped <laughs> out. I used to snorkel at Patrick's house in his pool, and that's tough. It's pretty trippy. It's not scary. Not scary. It sounds very scary. I'm gonna be In honest. Ceremony. This man's eyelashes are very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Things I learned last night. Taylor what are you talking about? <laughs> Just get to it. <laughs> Have you ever had any lucky moments? Tell us down in the comments. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> just don't <laughs> don't write it down. <laughs> don't just, just don't, let's just keep going. Just, just keep. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Uh, Harrison O'Kenny. <laughs> okay. Harrison O'Kenny was a chef in Nigeria. Um, I don't know like how great of a chef. I just know he was a chef. Okay. And at some point along the line, he got a job working on a tugboat called the Jask. Jascon five, four, Jascon four, Jascon four, Jascon four, um, and he was just the boat chef uh, on so a tug tugboat. Scott chefs, I guess so. Which is surprising to me because that seems like the kind of thing where you just kind of go out there, tug that boat in. Yeah, I was gonna say, how big are tugboats? Yeah, and that's like, like how, that's like a tow truck <laughs> having a chef. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about you hey. call you call AAA and they show up but and there's a dude in the back with a with, with a, a foreman a, griddle, with a griddle <laughs> back there. He wants to break it. <laughs> just you get in the front seat, you don't see him at first. It's night, right? And all you hear you is just hear the sizzling. <laughs> and you're like, is that your tow truck? No. Yeah. Hey, the tra- driver. <laughs> this is normal for him. It's just yeah, he, did, like, he didn't even hear it. What are you talking about? So what are you talking about? And you just hear the. <laughs> Like, what <laughs> you turn? Ah! And he's like, he's like, whoa, sorry, whoa, startled sorry. me there. <laughs> you're not gonna have us round a pancake. <laughs> I got startled. You yeah. like your uh, hash brown smothered or covered? Yeah, I'm the <laughs> tow truck chef. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I got, to, I got this job for winning a uh, competition on the Food Network. <laughs> so he worked. This isn't even. Just so we're clear, the AAA tow truck chef is not an entry level position. <laughs> no, you got this. Is it. you got a? This Invite is like a dream. <laughs> this is a dream position. Is where he's at. Okay, so you can so, make Waffle House on the side of the road. I guess AAA <laughs> now with mobile Waffle House. Honestly, it would make your car. How would you rate your service? And how would you rate the food? <laughs> like it would make your car breaking down a lot better. Like. Would it patent pending? <laughs> Would it though? Here no. I am, pretty bad day, car pretty broken down, yeah, yeah, yeah. late for my flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then this guy jumps out of the back seat, which is like, like star meal. Was like, <laughs> hey man, do you want onions or no? <laughs> what yeah, are your food the allergies? The tow truck driver's like hooking it up. Yeah, and then the guy comes out with a menu. <laughs> He's like, why don't you go ahead? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some waters. I'll be right back. <laughs> and you're like, excuse me. And then you get there, and he does the little flip around thing, and does the whole, you know, okay, you're good for payment right there. Cool. It's gonna ask you a few questions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I think that would. That's the kind of service I ho- I'm hoping for from my tow trucks. Yeah, and my tugboats. <laughs> Yeah, so he's how big is it? Google tugboats size, tugboat size, tugboat arms, biceps, tugboat biceps. Uh, typically range from twenty to thirty-two meters in length. Meters. Yeah, I don't know how to read that. That's uh, like about like ninety to hundred feet. Meters to feet. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, 20 meters is 65 feet. 32 meters is 104 feet. Um, okay. Hold on. How so many? what I said. 747.com. Uh, oh, crap. What, is, what was the URL? It's not how many 747s. Whatever. Many, okay, whatever. Um, I'll look it up. I'll find it's it. Dot biz. <laughs> it's it's so many? about 100 feet. That's what I'm saying. That's not big enough for a chef to be at. Whatever. Yeah. All right. So he's chef from a Jascon <laughs> four. Yeah. That was uh, a long tangent to get to. I guess tugboats have chefs. <laughs> chefs. 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 Uh, and they were tugging a boat into harbor. Um, and uh, it's overnight, right? It's late late at night. They kind of uh, separated from the boat so everyone could sleep through the night. Um, and in the middle of the night, Harrison, as most of us do, woke up to go to the bathroom. Sure. And while he's in the bathroom, um, a large wave hits the boat, capsizes it, um, and he's trapped in the bathroom. Uh, and he listens. Uh, <laughs> okay. I see the look on your face. He sticks his ear up against the door. He touches the handle to make sure it's not hot. <laughs> It's like, is it a fire? <laughs> I feel like we're upside down. What are you talking about? <laughs> get to the part where he gets out. <laughs> the boat sinks to the ocean floor, 104 feet um, to the ocean floor. Um, a couple important things to note about this boat. Um, and then these waters. How fast does the boat sink? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Important things to know about the water. Forget my question. Uh, an important thing to know about the water. Uh, what happened to the meals he prepared? <laughs> what happened to the steaks? <laughs> what happened to what the steaks? What about the steak? No, uh, so he, uh, an important thing to know about the waters. We mean he put where his, they litter, were. His, his litter, his ear to listen. Was that a joke? That was, that was a joke. Yeah, I was wondering, why did you do that? Okay. <laughs> no, he was listening while I was thinking because here's, here's, here's what's important. Um, in the waters around where they were at, there's a lot of pirates. And so there was a policy that they had on board most ships in the area is that overnight when everyone was sleeping, they would keep all the doors locked so pirates couldn't get to them and kill them and take over the ship, which was great for pirates, but bad for a sinking boat because no yeah. one could get the doors unlocked and they all got trapped in their rooms. For some reason uh, that no one is entirely sure why. Um, Harrison's bathroom uh, didn't completely fill with water. Uh, there was an air bubble, an air pocket in his bathroom. All the rest of the rooms filled up completely with water. But it's upside down, so the toilet water dumped <laughs> out. <laughs> I guess I never thought. He's about standing that. <laughs> in his own sewage. I guess I never thought about that. I don't know how plumbing works in boats. D- I did thought it, it was just before. a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's multiple floors, so there's the bathroom above you's just got an opening. Stop. You have to cover it when you. Did we joke down. like this in an episode? What episode is this from? Where I don't think we did because there's anyway. About? We yeah, we don't worry about it. I I want to. <laughs> I, I want to understand. Now. I don't know. Don't, don't worry about it. So, you don't want to remember. I you don't, do remember. Do you don't remember. want to remember. Uh, no, yeah, you sit down. You have to cover the one above you, so that way you're clear. That's disgusting. So uh, anyway, so he's got an air bubble. Yeah, so he's in this air pocket in the in. Uh, so what's he listening to see if anyone else got out? Well, he's listening to because he thinks that everybody else escaped and he got stuck trapped in that bathroom um, because he was just unlucky and decided to go to the bathroom at the wrong time or something. Okay. Um, and so. He's waiting in there. The like radiator in the room in the ruckus uh, got jum- jumbled up from the the side of the wall, and so he was uh, floating on that radiator, hanging on to that thing. Oh, so that was kind of lucky. So he didn't have to like keep himself afloat. I- I'm sure there'd be something else he could grab onto, but yeah, he was he was holding on to that uh, uh, in that air pocket. Immediately after this happened, obviously there was other boats in the area, and they saw this boat just flip over and sink. So they began this res- rescue op- operation immediately. Yeah, 
So helicopters started flying over, other boats started going trying to find them, and eventually they located where the ship had sunk to, and they sent some divers down a few hours after the event, um, in the middle of the night. They sent some divers down, and the divers, um, they couldn't get in to the ship because all the doors were locked. Uh, and so they were swimming around, but it had been hours at this point, and they're looking around, they're looking like at all no the windows, it's boat. clearly full of water. And so like nobody survived. They're like banging on the side of the hull to see if anybody bangs back and Harrison hears the banging. And so he starts banging back, but he's in like an inner bathroom at the bottom of the ocean. And so they can't hear him banging back on the walls because they're in their suits and their gear and stuff. This like is creating such a tightness in my chest. <laughs> oh, isn't that rough? Uh, I knew you would love this one. Yeah, this was one that where I was researching it. I was like, this has Jaron written all over it. He's going to love this. I saw a video on TikTok today where a guy was stuck in a grain silo and it made me want to vomit. How long was he stuck there? He got out. I don't know how long he was in there, but he's like, oh man, I'm stuck. <laughs> and I was, he's like doing that. That yeah. makes my yeah, that's, chest be like freaking. Ugh. That's terrifying. That's like that. That's, you see that biker, that motorcycle guy who fell down the cliff. Uh, it was a big news story. No. I don't know when it happened. I saw it a couple weeks ago. Uh, he and his buddy were out motorcycling and they fell down a fifty foot cliff. Oh, his I buddy did died. See but he that. didn't die. But he I took video. And he's like, I guess you know, because he broke his back and like, he couldn't move. He couldn't move. Yeah. And so he's I did yelling up a fifty foot. He can hear the cars going by and hear yeah. other motorcycles and yeah. they can't hear him. Like Virginia or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did remember that. Did he get out? Yeah. Cool. Someone finally heard him, I guess. So I was driving by and just heard. Uh, uh, I and would think it was the Yeti. Yeah. Maybe that's what Yeti is, is a bunch <laughs> of people lost <laughs> in the wilderness. Crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Domesticated. Um, <laughs> I don't know. He could, I don't know. He didn't have cell service, couldn't get out. I guess he took videos thinking, like, if eventually this they'll is, find someone's us. Someone's going to find it. Like, uh, um, he didn't even know his buddy had died. Hey, thanks for checking out Things I Learned Last Night. If you're enjoying this, we have a ton of episodes. We've been doing this for a few years now, uh, so make sure you go back, check them out. Uh, my current favorite is Elmer McCurdy. Uh, it's a story about a guy who was born in 1890, died in 1910, and was buried in 1976, which is just weird. Uh, the story is absolutely bonkers. I don't want to give too much away, but it was a super fun one. We loved it. Uh, make sure you check that one out. But again, thanks for checking out things I learned last night. What was that show we just watched on the island? What lost <laughs> <laughs> that we just watched. Oh, 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 uh, yep. With the phone. Yeah. And the video. What, what that show, show was that called, dude? You remember Alex? We were kind of obsessed with it for a it second was there. so good. It ended so weird though. Yeah, yeah. Didn't make sense. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, that's going to bother wow, me. Wow, that sucks. Uh, you think they're going to make a new one? No. No? No, it's on uh, HBO. HBO. I searched mm, mm, none you of these. Search, search Kristen Maletti or whatever her last name is. Ma, Ma, uh, not Kristen, is it either? Uh, yeah, I don't know who. What's I don't know a name? single star in that show. Anyways, we, this is killing a lot of time in this episode. Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman's in it. Look at oh, Nick you're Offerman. Right, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're it's right. You're right. It's called um, Shoot, man. All right. Let's see movies and TV Something. Shows. The tag is it's about time. Yep. Yep. It was so uh, Nick Offerman. Uh, the resort the resort. Yes. Yes, that's right. It was really good. Yeah, perfect. Uh, There's one we're watching right now uh, that has four seasons. I guess we're just finding out on Apple TV what? called servant. No, I've never heard of it. You not heard of that one. No, uh, where and so by the time this comes out, hopefully we'll have finished the series. I guess um, I'll have an updated review so yeah. far so slow, but it's in night Shyamalan. Okay. I didn't know uh, he did shows. He does. Shama uh, show, Shama, 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 Shama shows. shows. Uh, show Milan. And so, uh, <laughs> but it's servant is uh, this couple in Philadelphia who's like 13 month old baby died, not 13 month, 13 week old baby died. Yeah. And the mom just couldn't cope. Like, oh, just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. went into basically like a coma, was yeah. just like space out. So they gave her a baby doll 
oh. to help like, cope, yeah, right? Yeah. And suddenly she was back and pretending, like one of those like realistic dolls or whatever. Yeah. Well, then she hires a nanny for this doll. Oh, yeah. Well, the f- second night the nanny's there, the little baby monitor, the dad's in the kitchen and hears a real baby on the thing and goes up there and there's a real baby in the crib. How is there a baby? We don't know yet. It's pretty trippy. It's not scary. Not scary. It sounds very scary. Sounds like it would be. I know. I was very. It I was very. Very. I was scary. very like no. <laughs> no I don't it's not like scary. This. It's not scary so far. It's it's more supernatural, you know. Uh, um, but it's uh, interesting. It's pr- it's, pr- it's slow. Is it trippy. Um. Yes. There are definitely. There's episodes at the end where you're like, what? I'm realizing that's what I like. Like I don't like like yes. No, this is not you. I th- I'm saying this because I think you might like it. It's really slow and um, so far, but the ends of the episodes are like what the heck is happening mm-hmm. because yeah, I like those ones that bend your mind and make you think yes, and, you'll yeah, like this one yeah. a lot. I've been thinking about it Interesting. a lot. It's Interesting. good. Yeah. Well, anyways, so there's a baby in the bathroom. With <laughs> oh no, <laughs> he's like how oh, this baby kid. <laughs> Turns out every tugboat has one too. They hire them. They hire them. <laughs> they hire the baby. Keep the. Th- what do you call tugboat people? The <laughs> tugboat people. <laughs> tugboat people. What do you call tugboat people? <laughs> what do you call? What do you call restaurant people? You mean servers? Ugh, I guess. Yes. Well, what do you call? What do you call grocery store? What do you call people? Tugboat people? Employees? Tug tug boat tug. pushers? I don't know. Like, I don't know what you call them. <laughs> sailors, maybe? Maybe sailors, just sailors? Probably, I guess. Keep the sailors company. <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay. Uh, so there was a small bear cub <laughs> <laughs> who was also a chef. <laughs> The boat flipped over. Turns out it was flipped by a bear. <laughs> so they do the dive thing. They're banging on the side They're of the boat. On the side of the boat, he can, he's banging back. He's banging back, um, but they couldn't hear him because they're in full dive gear. They're out in the ocean. There's a ocean noises. <laughs> I don't know what those. <laughs> yeah, oh, drowning out the bangs, right? Sure. So the divers swim up, and they're like, "There's nobody. Anybody's survived to this point." Yeah, let's just worry about this next week. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, and so. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like, they're like we'll come back. What year is this? By the way, three days. Um, uh, you know that's an interesting question. Let me double check. Um, it was recent-ish. I want to say like early two thousands, sure, something like that. They um, really were like, let's come back. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, twenty thirteen. Okay. And they were like, all right, we'll come back later. Yeah. So uh, they were oh like, my gosh, they're like, we'll come back later to retrieve the bodies. Is what they said, um, and so they kind of put together a plan. And three days later, they put three together three days. <laughs> three days later, they put together this mission with some trained divers who were like expert divers that they had to like ship in um, from some other country to swim down there. What do they call those dive people? <laughs> <laughs> The water boys. Water boys. <laughs> we need to get some water boys out here. Let's get us some of those underwater boys. Now I understand why the NFL pays you guys so much. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> so he's that he survived all three days just floating on a thing because you would have had to sleep. Yeah, I don't understand that part. He had no food, no water. Uh, it, w- w- what's what's insane is uh, there's he's you, at the bottom they, of the ocean and, and that oxygen wouldn't run out. Well, there's some interesting things to hit there. Um, okay. He's at the bottom of the ocean, past the point where the light reaches, and so it's freezing cold water that he's and it's dark swimming in. Yeah, and he also woke up in the middle of the night, so he's in nothing but his boxers, and so he's swimming in this ice cold water in the dark, and uh, or he can hear the fish swimming through the boat, like they can't get into his room, but he can hear them swimming through the boat, um, eating stuff. And so he's pretty sure those are his crewmates out there getting, getting eaten? eaten by fish and he can hear them out there doing that. So he's in this air pocket just kind of holding on basically. Well, three days later they, they do this. Um, Is the water still down there? You think 
Like he's not like probably it's probably pretty still. I don't know why there would be like a a tide. He's not. I mean, he's not like. <laughs> I mean, you if know, he moved around, it probably would. Yeah, rock. But I bet it's really still. I don't know why it would move. Interesting. I can't think of a reason why. Wow. So it probably sucks. was very still. Um. Yeah, and he was just sitting there with head head just above water. Um. To answer your question, what's interesting is, um, in in a uh, uh, in a situation like this where there's that an air pocket deep underwater, um, the oxygen in there, if you're breathing it in, is only going to last so long. It's a finite resource, um, and so after the fact, some people uh, did the math to try to estimate. He probably only had another day in there. Maybe they said that they think that that with the size of the air pocket that he had, they think that. He had about a seventy-two hour air supply. Yeah, um, and they came on the third day, <laughs> so he literally had probably a matter of hours before he was going to run out of oxygen in there. Um, but there was more. And we've learned from Biosphere what like that it's like he can start to like suffocate just yeah, from just yeah. from having low oxygen. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and and what else is significant is um, when you're breathing, it's you're releasing CO two into the air and you're yeah. in that air bubble and you can't breathe CO2. Right. And so that's an issue as well. Luckily, what they think is that because there was so much water in there, was it was the water absorbing the carbon. Some of yeah. that carbon. And so he was able to survive longer than he should Almost have. producing more oxygen, not necessarily <laughs> producing oxygen. <laughs> sure. He would have had to plant a tree for that, um, but uh, they so they put together this dive operation to go down there and the whole idea of this mission was not like Oh, we need to save people. It was we're going to collect the bodies. Yeah, and so they knew that this was going to be a tough. Well, they knew it was going to be a tough mission for a few reasons. One, all the doors are locked, so they were going to have to rip these doors off. Yeah, a uh, hundred feet under the sea. Oh man, what happens when you rip it open and he's in there? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's here's what's, uh, <laughs> uh, and then you're going to have to pull a bunch of bodies out, uh, dead yeah. bodies out of the ocean. That I mean, they they're pretty confident. It's been days now, so there's. Uh, they knew how many something people was are on get board. Uh, probably about a dozen. Okay. Um, and so you don't know the exact number. I don't know the exact number. Okay. About a dozen. Um, and uh, <laughs> so they they rip off the door. Harrison, uh, about halfway through day two, um, realized no one was coming, and so he had to save himself essentially. So he was able to rip his door open. Um, by breaking a pipe off the wall and using it to just get the leverage and break his door open. So he was able to break his door open. He swam and found another air pocket in the kitchen, um, but he wasn't able to find a way out. Um, and so he ended up swimming back into his bathroom because there was a bigger air pocket there and just kind of waited and hoped and prayed and was like, I hope someone shows up because he couldn't get out. Hey, thanks again for being here for this episode. If you want to help us make more of these, we have a Patreon that you can support us on. We don't make money from this personally. All the money from Patreon goes straight back into our show, helps us to create better episodes, get our better production quality. Uh, but more than anything, we're just so glad that you're here. So thank you so much for supporting our show. And if you want early access and be part of our Discord, please consider supporting us on Patreon. But other than that, we just want to say thanks again. Imagine how terrified you'd be if you're a diver and you go down thinking you're about to just get a bunch of bodies and then one of them is like <laughs> uh, so hey, Harrison, you think he's like hey, <laughs> hey, you think he's doing a Muppet voice. He's like he's you like, think when they when, he, when they roll in and you're just down there and you just hear <laughs> is that the water? <laughs> 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 Where's he, John C. Riley? <laughs> <laughs> He's just like English. <laughs> <laughs> no, no American. American. Well, they're on. The, so these divers are on radio. This is 2013. So they got radio. There's a crew up above that's on radio with them, listening into everything, kind of directing them through, making sure they stay oriented and stuff like that. They spend two hours ripping open the side of this boat. They're with like power tools, underwater power tools. Um, and uh, obviously Harrison hears the whole thing. And so he's like, he's like, they're here. He's like, someone's here to save me. And he's thinking through the scenario and he has the same thought you had. 
And he's like, well, what if they find out I'm alive and it freaks them out? Yeah, he's like, he's like, so I need to be like careful with this, but I also need to make sure that they see me and they find me. And so uh, so he swims out to the kitchen because he knew he's like, he's like, that's kind of a path that they're most likely going to go through. Uh, and he swims out to the kitchen and he gets out to the kitchen and he's waiting in that air pocket um, for hours while they're ripping the hole into this boat. They finally get that hole open and they start swimming around and he hears them swimming through. And so he dives down to try to reach the divers and they pass him before he's able to get there. And so he like almost becomes kind of hopeless swims back up to the air pocket because he needs to get air and he's like listening around trying to hear them and they finally they start coming back and as they're coming back, he swims down um, and one of the divers reaches out and like sees his hand and grabs his hand to kind of pull him along and Harrison just squeezed back <laughs> and the guy freaked out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> And so uh, uh, he's like, he's like, there's one of them's alive, and the guy, you, the guy up top is like, what do you, what do you mean, someone's alive? They're like, we have a survivor, and so they, they're like, here, let's go back up to that air pocket. So they take him back up to that air pocket because he can't breathe underwater, obviously. Yeah. And so they're like, let's get the photo op uh, <laughs> in the air pocket. <laughs> No, this is uh, this is later. This is oh, the decompression. Oh, I was in the airport, and he's just like, "Can we please like, get out can of we here?" Leave? I assume that's him. <laughs> You're right. Uh, Tom Brady's in this. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Brady does look there? like Tom Brady. Uh, no, but they did actually swim out to his hair pocket. This is where he <gasps> was. This yes. is him in the air pocket. That's what I was saying. Imagine. Yeah, and they took a picture of him, and then. Uh, Holy cow, but then this presented a pretty major problem because it's there's a couple issues. He's been down here for three days. Um, He doesn't have the strength to get up there. Well, more than that, he's at 100 feet below the ocean and his body's used to that pressure. And so if he comes up to shore or to sea level right away, like there's a, a condition called the bends. Um, and so it's something that happens to divers a lot, but no one's ever down as long as he's been down. And so they were scared that his blood vessels would literally start popping because of the pressure. And so he would basically like fall apart from the inside because of the pressure change. And so they had to come up with a way to get him up and slowly move him up over time and like repressurize 20 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet up to shore. It took them two days to get him up above the water (laughs) because they had to put him in the suit, transport him up. And like, did they explain that before they did it? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, did they tell him in the boat down there? They're like, here's what we're going to do. It's going to take some time. Or did they just start and he's like, he's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna be fine. And then, the, and then they stop. Like, hold on, wait like, here, bud. We gotta wait here for three hours. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, no. They can't communicate to him. <laughs> oh, they gave him a headset. That makes sense. Yeah, they gave him a headset. Okay, you gotta wait for three hours, man. Because he doesn't have. Like, I'm thinking he doesn't have a scuba suit, does he? Well, they brought him a scuba suit. Where's so he gonna put them, that on? One of them swam up. They came down and they put the scuba suit. Where's he gonna him put that on? In the air pocket. In the air pocket. In the air pocket. He put a scuba suit on. There's actually a photo of him uh, with his scuba suit. Let me grab it. Hold on. And um, so and it was like a pressurizing. So suit. he's got he's got ears. They oh, can I don't talk think to I him. Have that. Yeah, they, they they obviously can communicate okay. with him. That's what and I was thinking. And they told him before they went up. They were like, "Hey, this is gonna be a process." Um, and so they got. But when they got him up, they couldn't even. Um, like let him out of the water. They put him in that. That's what this is. This is a pressure chamber. All the divers had to go in this pressure chamber and repressurize. And so they swam into this thing. And this was on the he's shore. He's so tired, dude. He just he's just like, please let me up. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, yeah, we're just gonna hang out here. And so he had to sit in this pressure chamber for another two days too, um, while he repressurized to normal. It took him a full seven days. Yeah. From the time of the sinking to get out, that well, that's a that's another thing that's crazy is like they told him after the fact, 
uh, how long it had been. He didn't realize he was down there for three days because it was so disorienting. He yeah. thought he had been down there for like 10 hours. Um, wow. Yeah, because the whole experience was such a disorienting experience for him. Um, and so yeah, after after a little bit of time, they eventually repressurized him to normal like land pressure levels and he was able to come Man, out. It's been 10 years that you were down there. <laughs> They all get together like, how long do you want to tell them it was? How long, <laughs> how long do you want them to think it was? Yeah, we can, we can, we can convince them. Yeah, for we sure. can tell them. We can tell them. Uh, somebody call Google. Have them send one of their experimental phones out to us. We'll all have them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. Google, we're trying to mess with this guy. <laughs> Google, be like, that's pretty funny. That's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we'll send them. Here you go. Uh, so he uh, obviously was pretty traumatized by the event. Um, he had some major PTSD, uh, and so because of that, he was like, "I'm never going anywhere near water again." He's like, "I'm only a land chef." He actually got a job on a tow truck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a land chef now. Uh, no, he he vowed to never go back on uh, uh, to sea again. Um, but in uh, 2022. He conquered his fear. Probably something his counselor made him do. Carnival cruise, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, let me save this. And A this sponsor off. of our podcast. <laughs> no, he conquered his fear. Uh, this is actually kind of uh, poetic. Honestly, he conquered his fear and he got uh, scuba certified. Scuba cert- I was going to say, yeah, yeah, and the rescuers gave him his diploma. Uh, they flew out and they gave him his certification ticket. I'm gonna be honest. Ceremony. This man's eyelashes are very pretty. <laughs> I mean, like, look how perfect those things are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, those are some some He's good, got some good lashes. lashes. I agree with you. Um, so yeah, so it came kind of full circle. And now he rescues people from the Have bottom you ever of done the sea. Like, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. But he just scubas for fun, I guess. Sometimes. Um, He's like, he's like something in me misses it. <laughs> There's a part of me. Have you, ever, have you ever done scuba at all? No. Have you? Well, technically, we did it. At, there was a resort that they do scuba lessons in the pool. Yeah, yeah. It is still disorienting to breathe underwater. Yeah, that's like, weird. Your body goes, don't do that. I I used to snorkel at Patrick's house in his pool, and that's tough. <laughs> I used to snorkel. <laughs> Is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I used to just breathe the water. I used to snorkel. I used to just breathe water. <laughs> I yeah, I know what that's like. I used to snorkel. Shut yeah. Up. I used to <laughs> snorkel. <laughs> Idiot. That's what the divers heard when they were looking for. That's why I survived God. so long. I used to snorkel. I know how to snorkel. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> here's here's uh, 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 he didn't realize when it happened. He thought he was the only one trapped in there. He thought everybody else got out. He was the only survivor. Um, what's sad is um, I guess the community he was a part of in Nigeria uh, is very superstitious. And so yeah. uh, because he was the only person who survived and he survived in such a peculiar way, the people in that uh, in that community Exiled and like the family him. of the rest of the survivors thought he cast a curse on everybody else so he could survive. And oh. so he didn't go to the funeral of anybody and he kind of like lost his community because they all thought he was like the bad guy in the scenario, which is super sad. Yeah. Um, Cause he honestly kind of just got really lucky. Um, yeah. And uh, and it it cost him a lot of relationships because of it and he's wow. got serious survivor guilt, but He's turned yeah, it around. Sure. He's turned it around. He's scuba diving again. He's chefing on land only. Um, but he where knows at? His, huh? Where at Waffle House? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where at. But he's continuing his cooking career. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, has probably the craziest story anybody's got to tell at parties. Nobody <laughs> believes. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> believes it. Uh, he's just sitting in the corner. People are like, oh my gosh. So last week, you're not going to believe this. Last week, and me and my dog were walking in the park, and he just in the corner just goes, I spent seven days in the sea. <laughs> and everyone goes, sorry. Excuse let me do it again. <laughs> I spent seven days. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. And I was like, why are you talking like that? 
<laughs> I spent seven days in the sea. <laughs> What was that? What did you just say? I spent seven days in the sea. <laughs> he talks like an old pirate. <laughs> yeah, they said they said that he had a seventy-two hour oxygen supply. He got rescued at hour sixty. That's um, so he was close. That is wild. He was close, and that was an estimation. They could have been yeah off on that. Um, yeah, that includes the kitchen pocket too. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because he was swimming between those two pockets occasionally. Wow. Um, how do you get his cardio in? Still? That's so scary, dude. It, yeah, isn't that gnarly? So, uh, I guess the lesson is, uh, if you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go to the bathroom, go because you never know when your house is going to flip the over and door to open, the bottom though. of the ocean. <laughs> wow! If I've never had a nightmare before, <laughs> it'll be that now. Yeah, I can't imagine a scarier situation. Um, uh, what's interesting though is that <laughs> because he fell to the bottom of the sea. Sure. We all know that there's <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, go ahead. Sure. Let's hear this out. We all know. We all know at the bottom of the sea. You know when he was down there? Oh, I want to hear what yours is first. <laughs> we all know at the bottom of the sea. Uh, there's a pineapple and next door there's a dude oh. who plays the clarinet. And one day he was having a clarinet off. <laughs> Don't respect that. <laughs> Don't, respect Don't let him get away with that. Okay, what do you what's your what are you I trying to say? Go, what are you trying to he say? He was there floating on that radiator. He'd hear the fish swimming in the boat. And he's thinking this is awful. This has got to be hour four or five. It's day three. Yeah. Yeah. And he's trying to listen. He's got his ear up to the bathroom door. And he just hears. You're still here, which means you've either walked away from the video or uh, you just kind of gave up and just let it play in the background. Either way, thanks for doing that. Thanks for making it to the end of the episode. Through the fiddle off, you've made it. So uh, there are more episodes. You can click that right there, or you can watch other videos. Make sure you subscribe to this video and uh, whatever other things YouTubers say. <laughs>